You close. My, you, mm -hmm. you closure. Oh. We gotta sing you whatever you just said. Oh. Just saying, do that. Oh, I thought he was saying that closure the end part. Is it recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. What am I supposed to say? short I promise you 20 minutes we will not take a lot of your time we're just gonna give you some nuggets some helpful hints hopefully some suggestions uh, pretty much uh, some do's and don'ts don't do what we did because it's the long route so we're gonna give you some shortcuts on some stuff okay some suggestions right one thing I want to talk about it's kind of a pun to say it this way but as we're talking about stewardship it is finance covers other areas as well what I want to encourage you to do is invest. Invest. Put what you value towards what you value. In saying that, you are your greatest asset. So invest in yourself. Get, get some tools, get some information so that you can be more effective with the stewardship that you've been entrusted with. With that said, I brought out a few, not, not all of them, but I have several uh, volumes that we have. Yes. So, I mean, this is not even a third of what we have in oh our library. Gosh. So I don't have to be the expert. Yeah. What I do is I retrieve the information from those who are the experts. Mm -hmm. That's the key to it. So we can come across confident in what we have and what we know and what we do, but it's because we're relying on mm -hmm. those who've either gone to school and they have the MBAs and, right. and so forth. Like we talked about uh, Dave Ramsey. Right. This is one of his. I don't know can if you, you see, see it? it? Money Answers book. Great, okay. great, great resource. Larry Burkett, from the early part, when we first got married, we we're 27 plus years, a lot of his budget tools, they're still, I mean, they, they're they iconic. They'll, they'll never uh, expire. You yes. can use that information. Now, this is a point that I want to jump in that, that's, that's been really on my heart. And I saw something posted on Facebook this week, and it drove the point home even uh, further for me. Hi, very, very sober moment. Uh, someone was posting that there's between 3,500 and 3,700 families currently on the GoFundMe program trying to raise money to bury a loved one. Between 3,500 and 3,700 right now in the Fort Worth area, Fort Worth, in that zip code, GoFundMe accounts to bury someone. And I'm not being insensitive to the individuals, but that is such an egregious thing to me. If you've lived your life or whatever the case may be, and we don't have the resources in place to properly put this person away, that's just, just an area. So getting life insurance, you're going to hear me say that all throughout, get life insurance. If you have someone that you love and that first person being yourself, absolutely love yourself, love first. yourself enough to have some life insurance okay. and it put a important. will in place so that your final wishes are Honored. Absolutely. Stewardship. Now, I know that even as far as world and saving about having life insurance, having savings, but then what about the reality of the fact where you say, well, you know what? I literally have been laid off for so many days and so many months, so many years. Oh, well, I'm sorry, not years, months. Let me just say it right there. You've been laid off or your finances in a tight constraint or you have a lot of different things or you've had illness or sicknesses and where medical bills have actually come in pretty much kind of taken over a lot of what you're doing. How do you get started? That's great to be able to have people to say, you know, get life insurance, have a savings, how this, but what are the steps to be able to do that, right? You know, everyone is, is really good to be able to tell you what to do, but they won't tell you how to be able to do that in a really re relatable way and something that's tangible for you to do where it doesn't take a whole lot of money and researching and ask, asking questions and finally just saying, you know what, I need help. Show me how to be able to do that. So the first part of it is first acknowledging and listing the things what is it that you need for your family what I need it for my family is maybe not what you need it for your family and what I'm meaning by that where you're in need of a vehicle at that time or you may already have a car um, transportation to a job is, is definitely priority uh, do you have a place to live those are things so you first have to list the things 
uh, be honest with yourself on what is it that's needed? What's priority in your home? What's list that first? Remember that was something I mentioned last week. What are the first priorities? The necessities. Mm -hmm. The necessities. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And the one thing about it is, what's important to me is not important to you. So mind you, take a moment for yourself to list those things that are important mm -hmm. for your family. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have young children in our home, but you may have young children. So child care is also something that's uh, that may be an instrumental point for you, okay? So take a moment, first of all, and do that. The next thing about it is you say, okay, well, I only make, um, let's just say $20,000 a year. How is it that I can be able to find a place to be able to stay or how do I maintain that? We mentioned about splitting the bills, really looking at saving and understanding what that means by pulling back some of the things that are just nicety items. Those are not priorities. Those are not necessities. You're going to have to back up on those things. You really do. Um, we ourselves have experienced layoffs. We've done that, especially in the telecom industry. Um, Roland, my husband, is a project manager, a senior project manager in telecommunications engineering. And with that, I remember right after September 11th occurred, telecom actually took a complete dive. And there were so many layoffs that were occurring between AT&T, Verizon, uh, uh, and on and on and on. So we understand that when it takes, because your bills don't change just because you get a layoff, right? Right. So, so what you have to do is just get over the shock. Get right. over the shock. It's shocking, it's, it's frustrating, it's traumatic, yes. it's all of that. You've got to come to a place of just settling yourself. You're still here, yeah. you're still alive, all your gifts, all your abilities, yeah. all your strength, all your intelligence, everything is still in there. You've not right. lost any of that. Right. You have to reinvent yourself. you got to reinvent you yourself. But the first thing you have to do is stabilize. you got to stabilize, stabilize mm -hmm. yourself. I liken it to uh, if you experience going through a storm. You want to be safe, you stabilize, and then you try to salvage what can be salvaged, right. and then determine what's going to be to your best benefit. Right. Is, it, is it best for us to rebuild or tear this down and start all over again? Right. So using that high level right. analogy, so going through a layoff or going through a, a job loss mm -hmm. or a cutback, then you have to respond accordingly. You do. One of, one of the plans that you'll see with uh, the teachings of Larry Burkett and Dave Ramsey is you need to have an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. And they recommend have at least a thousand dollars saved up in that. But well, what if you're just starting, you're just trying to just pick up the pieces before you can mm -hmm. start that emergency fund? In, in a time of famine, you always sow. Mm -hmm. You always sow. You never stop sowing. What does that mean? Save. Put something aside. So stabilize yourself first. Mm -hmm. Even if it's twenty dollars, five dollars, it doesn't somewhere. start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is that we tend to think that it has to be hundreds of dollars to be able mm -hmm. to get started. Mm -hmm. What you know what it is yeah, with regarding that. Dave Ramsey and Larry Burkett. You know the one word that I would say is just discipline, just accountability. That's the first thing. Before you can get started, you can have all these wonderful ideas and plans. But for what they're trying to teach you is some discipline. Be disciplined, even if it's. Five dollars, even if it's ten dollars, mm -hmm. even if it's twenty dollars. What they're trying to say: Can you even discipline yourself to do that? Start I somewhere. I want to give a shout out. She's in glory now, but my wife's beautiful grandmother, Mama Cora, who she's named for, she gave us this um, idea early on in our marriage. So twenty-seven plus years ago, she had a leather purse that she kept in the back of the closet, hanging up, and at, at the end of every day we both were to empty out the coins, no pennies, but all the other coins out of our wallet, right. pocket, her purse, and we put it in that purse and we never counted it. We right. just dumped it in there. Right. There were countless times where we needed diapers, where we needed milk, gas, gas. any of those things. You would be amazed at how much just, you say. Yeah, just, just in doing that. Coins. So it's just a little bit. You have to start somewhere in being disciplined. Mm -hmm. You have to be forthright and just stay with it. I'm telling you, this is going to benefit you. It's going to benefit someone mm -hmm. that is trying to figure out how to be able to start it. Uh, so I need you to share this. Don't forget, reach out, share some of this to your followers, give us some love uh, with your ha with your hearts, tap on the screen, let us know if this is valuable information for you or not. This is just only the beginning. We're trying to scratch the surface of things. We're going to hit and miss some of the ideas. But again, where it started was discipline. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing for us. I'm doing that now with coins because I don't like my purse to be heavy. So I'm actually taking those coins out, put them in, in a container. 
and I cannot wait to be able to see how much money we actually mm -hmm. have. It yeah. will be a blessing to do something. I yeah. promise you. All you have to do is start. Now, the other thing is when you're going and have gone through a storm, one of the things we're always talking about, it will affect your credit score. Mm -hmm. That was, I'm, I'm major on that. I hated it when it starts affecting my credit score. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it will affect it because of course, if you have all these bills and your, your money goes down or you have a job layoff, yes, it will affect it, but that's one month or two months. Just because of the fact you've had a hit on your score where it's decreased, I hated, I hated it when it actually you, you're late on one thing and it had kind of dropped you 10 points, 20 points where you've been really maintaining. But what will happen is that as soon as you're able to get savings, I promise you, it will build back up. You, if you pay attention to it, we are so fearful of just looking at your credit report. Mm -hmm. Pull it up. Sweetie mentioned last week on ways that you can be able to just get it for free. Yeah. All I'm telling you to do, the first thing is if you're concerned about that as well, just get your credit report and take a look at it. There could be things on there that's not even yours. Mm -hmm. So start there to know where you're beginning. Yeah. Then from there, start at the beginning at the lowest points that could be paid off and start with those. But remember, we always talked about your necessities are first. Right. I want to say a couple things. Here's a couple of books that we have. Can you see it? Credit scores and Let's credit reports and the complete guide to credit repair. These came from like staples, okay? You can go to uh, bargain books, you can go to the library. You don't have to buy the resources. You can check them out, you can read it and get your information there. Right. Okay, so, so be intelligent that way. I wanna say this, and it's kinda off the beaten path a little bit, but I really wanna speak to this because I feel it in my spirit deep in here. You are not your credit score. You are not what has happened to you in the storm. It does impact you, trust yes. me. And the society in which we live, they use the FICO scores and all of that we to do. determine if you've been uh, disciplined with um, handling credit. And so if you've not done that, then the scores are lower. So they say you're credit risk and all of that. But I want to say this to you. That's not who you are. That right. may be what you did. Or but that's not who you are. Don't allow that to define you. That's right. what I want to break you out of. Your greatest resource is you. And if you've ever had it before, you can have it again. You can do it again. It's better. not about the better because you'll learn more yes. from the failure. The failure is a you gift do. to you. And so now don't, don't take it personal where you're no longer motivated and you're yes. depressed and you're down. You're going to get through this. You're going to get through this storm again. Okay. Right. So, so face that, that it's not you. It, you can explain it. There are things that I had sent letters in to say, this is this was like this yes because i was out of work right so of course i couldn't keep up with it so i wanted that letter i wanted that statement mm -hmm. put into my credit file so when a creditor looked at it said well yeah he was doing fine he was always on time until he lost his income right so, so you have to give just you can give, you can yeah. explain it give justification for and reason why and they will look at that so don't just think oh my gosh my score went down or yes i lost my job mm -hmm. and just think that's it you are your best advocate. Mm -hmm. So you can only you can speak to yourself more than anyone can. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, you need to share this with some people. Some people need to hear this and know this because we are really sick and tired of us living as far as in lack. Mm -hmm. And what you're supposed to do, remember we had you to list uh, things that you're supposed to do to move forward, mm -hmm. to get it done. This is what you're supposed to do. This is one of those things because you may need money for that building or for whatever project or whatever purpose that you're supposed to be work walking into. You're needing some credit. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things you do. Let's start first and foremost by looking at your credit, looking and taking taking ownership to the things that you have done and just calling them, calling them and, and letting them know. And that way there's a note that's on there saying why this is certain, why this is behind, mm -hmm. where there's been an illness or you've been in the hospital or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Just tell them, you know, don't be prideful in that. That's right. So you're assessing it. You're looking at the state that it's in. You're confronting and facing it. Okay. Then you're going to put together a plan of where you want to go. Right. If your goal is to have a 720 credit score, that's your goal. If you're, if you're a veteran, you can get a VA loan if you have a 640 credit right. score. So if that's your goal and you're now 350, then you see what you have to work at. Right. Don't get depressed about it. Don't get discouraged about it. It's right. just a goal. Now you're going to put into place practical steps mm -hmm. to get you there. 
Right. There are some um, high interest credit cards for yes. building credit. Right. Okay, you have to discipline yourself because you don't want the cycle to become even worse. Right. Uh, First Premier is one. We're not just endorsing, but First Premier is one. Mm -hmm. You put down a certain amount of money, they give you a card, you charge yes. on that card, your necessity, maybe it's fuel for that month, and pay you pay it off. it off every month. And that's building your and credit. Your credit score start will start with start something. Going up. It that's will all start you have to going do. up. Mm -hmm. It will. It just starts there. Start there with something. And before you know it, I think Capital One even has one as well that you can be able to do and assess as well, too. And then you move up into any of the other, the top elite, you know, Capital One cards and all of that. All I'm telling you is that you actually have the resources and don't even realize them that they're right in front of you. Now, someone asked, what are the, is there a template or is there a resource to be able to write those letters mm -hmm. that you need to be able to do mm -hmm. for, um, for the, for your credit scores or for your credit report? These two manuals right here, these two books right here, again, We'll put them, we'll have them actually on the video because when we do our actually editing and it actually lo uploads on Mondays, we will make sure that the resources are on there, okay? For instance, this one here says the complete guide to credit repair. It's how to get a copy of credit report. It tells you, nice. um, pardon? Letters. The letters, all of those, the templates are in here. So you can find these. Again, I got them at uh, Staples. I'm trying to tip it so you can see it. Staples? Staples, you know, okay. the uh, office supply type yeah, store. I see that. Mm -hmm. They're there, and you can Google it online. Google right. it online. Now, again, we'll make recommendations. You send us a Gmail email at the Sigler series at gmail.com with your specific questions, and I'll respond. Right. There are templates available in those manuals, and there are letters. I've written the letters. I've used it myself. I didn't go through a credit repair company at the time, no. and I put them in there, and I'll tell you what they did. As a result of the work that I did, they wiped out all of my bad credit. I ended up having a zero credit score. But at least you had some place to build uh -huh. up. And then I went from there. And in a year, I went from a zero to 500 in a year. Now it took time. It took time. I had to be disciplined. I couldn't spend like I used to spend. Mm -hmm. And, and I re I'm, a, I'm the king of recycling things, recycling meals. We had leftover parties. If we had a little portion of food, say hamburger helper or spaghetti and this and that, mm -hmm. we put it all together in a lazy Susan and put fresh rice in the middle. And the kids thought it was a party, leftover party. Right. Mm -hmm. You're asking, is bank bankruptcy not a good idea? Now, the one thing about it is that a lot of people will end up saying bankruptcy. We remember that stays on your credit report for at least seven years mm -hmm. on that. So, what, seven to 10 years on that. So when we talk about bankruptcy, a lot of people think that that's the only way out. Right. And it isn't. It isn't. It, it isn't. isn't. It really isn't. So really it takes, I'm not going to say, is it a good idea or not? Because it really, you have to evaluate what's going on in it because you may look at it and say, this is terrible. I have no way out, but we haven't taken the, you haven't taken mm -hmm. the time out to actually contact them That's right. because you can actually negotiate right. because they would rather have something rather than nothing. Right. You understand? Right. So let's kind of look at it. if you want some of the, um, some one-on-one -on -one assistance with that on mm -hmm. what we've walked through as well too email us we would be more than happy to be able to talk to you and give you some advice or mm -hmm. even direct you to someone else that's that's definitely their specialty in that okay right so the thing there is you have to look at your specific individual circumstance right again if you love yourself invest in you yes and if you have family members children be responsible take care of the things when our right. kids were small I always maintained two million dollars worth of life insurance always. because I didn't want her to have three small boys two years apart yeah. trying to raise them as a single mother without any money two million dollars isn't, isn't a lot a of lot money, of money. Mm -hmm. but you can invest in that and live off interest and different things like that so being responsible I wanted to make sure because I love her mm -hmm. I took care of her and the mm -hmm. kids in that regard now as they've gotten older the jokers ain't getting nothing now the granddaughter's gonna get some stuff but they ain't getting nothing <laughs> It's time for them to get it and do it themselves. But we still love them. But invest in yourself. Get the materials. Get the tools. Don't be discouraged. Don't be in despair because you've had a hiccup or you've had a mate. Yeah. Well, sometimes people have gone through divorce right. and various traumas. And had to start over. And it, it messes up the credit. But people will understand you just have to work with it and work right. through it. 
it will work if you work it. It really will. It really mm -hmm. will. Now we talk about even as far as with the kids when they get older. Now we're kidding and everything because of course we have. We want to talk about that as well. We have living wills mm -hmm. and we have wills for estates as well too. And you're like, well, I don't have an estate. Yes, you do have an mm -hmm. estate. We have a state. We that was something that um, that was taught to us as far as with our with our mother with my mother um, because she had an estate. We had a trust fund and all of that. But I'm telling you, one of the things that my mother did was taught us in reference for resources taught us to be able to do a lot with little mm -hmm. uh, again when we start talking about starting somewhere from the beginning start first and foremost knowing what are your priorities what are your necessities, necessities. for your home find that out first mm -hmm. then on, t on top of that look and see what things you can actually cut back if you have um, direct TV and you have like 2,000 channels well do you think we really do we watch all of them do we need to back that up where we're not having to pay two to three hundred dollars per month let's kind of back let's kind of scale that down mm -hmm. so we can be able to say this is what we feel like we can be able to do for our home yes. so again don't be discouraged we're excited about the stewardship there are some things you yes. do need to cut there are some things you've got to cut. It's sometimes to cut it. That's the reason why we have the song. There are some things you need to cut in your life. You really do. We love you we love so you. much. We don't want you to go through a process and we think you're alone in what you're That's doing, right. okay? That's right. You're and not if, alone. And if God can do it for us, He can do it for you. Oh, trust Because He Emily. loves you just as much as He loves us. Yes. Okay? Absolutely. So, so recover from it. Cut the things you need to cut. We're going to talk more on stewardship next week. And we're going to show you how you need to cut it. <laughs> Alright, we, we love, love you. you. Mm. Love you more. Way too high, you need to cut it. Cut it. Your price is way too high, you need to cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Cut it.